I'm so excited that you guys could join me today. Today is definitely uh, one of the more comfortable days for me because it's going to be a little bit more restorative, which is great for the weekend. But it's also great for people who have never practiced yoga before. And with that has been a primary intention of mine with these classes is just to open up for people who maybe are not familiar with yoga or are concerned to try it or hesitant just because of the capabilities or lifestyle that they might be facing. So I really hope that these classes can add some clarity and structure so that you can kind of be discerning as you step forward in your yoga practice. Now, before we get started today, I just want to let you know I am doing a webinar this afternoon, a stress reducer and immunity booster webinar. We're going to do a couple of things that are going to be good for your stress system, for your nervous system specifically, and your immunity. But this afternoon at two o'clock mountain time is going to be a wonderful opportunity to get some more insight on those topics specifically. Now, while we're in this um, virtual yoga studio together, <laughs> you can ask questions. You could even unpause your audio and show me your video if you want to have more of an interactive dialogue. Or if you have questions and want to talk one-on-one -on -one outside of the group, then I'm always available to do that. Maybe just write your question down so that we can get back to it later. My intention is to show a variety of options with how you can practice these poses. So whether you're a beginner and have never practiced yoga before, or if you're an advanced practitioner and been doing this for a couple of years, that you'll kind of be able to shift forward with what's best for you. Now, I can't see you, and since I am far away from the screen, even if you had something playing, it would be difficult for me to see what your specific practice is like. So you'll have to practice your own discernment, and if there's anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, or if there's any pain, such as pinching sensations or overstretching, then I would just recommend that you kind of back off of those. However, an achy stretch is okay, and a muscular stretch is also okay, even slightly encouraged. So <laughs> building the discernment in that is gonna be a big one. Now for today's class, I'd recommend having some blocks nearby. You will need a strap or a belt, some blankets. And if you even have a bolster, that's gonna be beneficial. Now I understand that there's a handful of people that might not have these props, so I made a household yoga prop video um, that I hope some of you guys had the chance to watch. And it just is really meant to build up some creativity where you don't have to have these props, but understanding maybe the qualities of the props so that you can make them with things around your house. So really at a very bare minimum, strap, blocks, and blankets, and we'll kind of improv from there. Another thing that's beneficial, especially for these Saturday classes, is some wall space. You can see that I have two mats set up so that I can change the position of myself. So number one, you can see the poses better, but also number two, I'm going to be using the wall for a couple of poses. It's not necessary, but it is a nice support to have. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start seated with the legs crossed in Sukhasana today. In Sukhasana, or sweet or easy pose, the legs are crossed here near the ankle. And you kind of notice there's a smile line from knee to knee. So you can think of sukha means sweet, happy, or blissful. And we have sweet or easy pose, which is the mimics kind of the smile. Then take your hands alongside your hips, coming to fingertips so that your fingertips are light on the floor. You'll bend your elbows back to the wall behind you and start to stretch the shoulders back. As you take a few breaths, Start to lift up the side waists. Notice how the whole front of the armpit starts to open, maybe even has a stretching sensation. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, try to fill your lungs completely. Notice how even the bottom of your rib cage can ex ex uh, expand and contract with your breath. As we really start to expand and deepen our breath, you're already starting to tune down the nervous system response. And use those breaths to bring your mind to your body. 
Number one, maybe noticing the characteristics of your breath. And number two, noticing if there's any tension or sensations throughout your body. Since we're gonna reflect on how those might shift and how those sensations might change throughout class or throughout the poses. Let go of any tension in your face or your eyes. And on your next inhale, bring your hands together in Namaskarasana, prayer pose. As the palms rest against each other, you'll feel the base of your wrist near the base of your sternum. The elbows do lift slightly. As the palms rest against each other, you'll feel a slight pressure between them. And try to use that pressure to actually roll the shoulders back and down the spine. Again, emphasizing that openness in the front of the armpit. Soften any tension in the thighs that might have risen subconsciously. And we're gonna start class today by chanting three ohms together. Some of you are familiar with this and have done this before. Some maybe haven't. You're welcome to just sit back and listen. Those who would like to give it a try and maybe who haven't ohmed before, the sound is spelled A-U-M. And so the sound kind of transforms. It'll start sounding like you're at the dentist. Ah. But then ultimately that kind of changes with the curl of the lips like you're trying to blow a bubble. So it moves from ah. So there's kind of this curling sound as the lips start to curl and close. So you're welcome to give it a try or just sit back and listen. Let's all chant three ohms together. Let's start with an inhale. Ah. Ah. Release any tension that might have risen in the face, eyes, or jaw. At the end of your next exhale, bring your chin down to your chest, surrendering the head to the heart, intellect to intuition. And you can release the hands to the thighs, slowly lift your head, and open the eyes. You'll notice which leg is closest to you and switch the cross of the legs. So we're still in Sukhasana, sweet or easy pose. And we're gonna practice Parvatasana, a little mountain pose. You're welcome to watch or join me in this. I'm gonna lace my fingers together, press the palms away, and I wanna open my palm really close to the base of my palm, which is right near where it connects to the wrist joint. So as you spread the base of the palm, also known as the heel of the palm, try to keep the arms straight. If you ever feel any sensations of pinching or pain as you take the arms up, you can go ahead and just pause there. But ultimately, we're going to take the arms up and overhead for Parvatasana. And as you reach the chest up, see if you can soften the tops of the shoulders with the arms straight. Now, often when we lift the sides of the chest, the shoulders start to lift up towards the ears. But see if you can keep that lift in the side waists. Like you're trying to create space between the top of your pelvis, the top of the hips, and the bottom of your armpit has to become long, rather than the arm, arms and the shoulders drawing up towards the ears. As you make the arms completely stick straight, pull the wrists back and lift the chest up. Taking deep inhalations, deep exhalations. Let go of any tension in the face or the eyes. And then bring the hands back down. Notice which pinky is on the loose end and we'll switch the grasp of the fingers. Pressing the palms away, trying to keep the fingers laced quite tightly rather than allowing the fingers to splay. And then take the arms up and overhead. Notice if the shoulders are lifting up or pulling down. You can even move them for a moment just to observe that. 
And as you draw the shoulders down the spine, try to lift the chest up. You can even use the pressure of your legs moving down towards the floor to help boost the side waists. And pulling the wrists back, lifting the armpits, lifting the chest forward. And then bring the hands down, sit up nice and tall. We're gonna take the legs wide. So you can scoot yourself to the back edge of your mat, the back long edge of your mat, and then take the legs wide. You can step the feet wide with the knees bent and then press the heels away. I like to attempt to line myself up in the center of my mat so that I know if one of my legs or one of my hips is more stiff than the other. Sometimes I'll come into this pose and one leg wants to be quite far forward and the other has an easier time opening up. So that can kind of display if one hip is more tense than the other or one is even more mobile than the other. This pose is Upa Vista Konasana, expanded angle pose. Go ahead and sit tall with your hands alongside the hips. Now, if you notice that it's difficult to sit upright or you're feeling tension in the low back, I'd recommend sitting a little bit higher. Sit on some more support. The props aren't always necessary, but they really sure can alleviate tension and discomfort that's just unnecessary for us to deal with. Sitting up tall in Upavista Konasana, we're going to move into a seated twist. So Parshva can join me. I'm moving off, uh, twisting off to the left. So I still have my left hand behind me, taking my right hand forward slightly. Now, even though I'm twisting, I'm not trying to screw down. I'm still trying to lift up and mimic the experience of unscrewing the spine as we twist off to the left. You can even turn your head slightly over the left shoulder. Notice what the shoulders are doing. Are they draping forward? Are they lifting towards the ears? Or can you create that same spreading across the chest, spreading across the front of the armpit sensation that you were feeling before when we first started? Deep breaths. You might notice now that with the twisting in the abdomen that the breath is moved up towards the lungs. And then coming back to center, we'll twist off to the right. The right hand behind us, left hand comes forward just slightly but there's still this upward lifting and twisting. Parjva Upavista Konasana. So you gently lengthen your breath. You can take note that the legs are still slightly active here. But as you press your heels down into the floor, there's almost this uh, a retention to lift the knee up slightly, just so you can keep that pressure in the heel rather than the knee joint. And as the legs become a little bit more active, it gives you some firmness to lift the chest from, to create that unscrewing sensation from. It really comes from the legs. And then you can turn your chin to look over the right shoulder, draw the shoulders back and down the spine, trying to create that openness in the front of the armpits and across the chest here. And then back to center. And we'll do each side one. So twisting off to the left. You can start sitting up nice and tall. Some of you might even feel comfortable leaning forward over your left leg slightly. But we're not looking to compromise our form here. We do still want to have this lift of the chest, roll of the shoulders back. So any forward momentum, it has to come from the hip. And ultimately, there's a sensation of the chest still lifting up towards the ceiling, even when we're bending forward. And then coming back through center, twisting over the right leg, leaning forward, so deepening into Parjva Upavista Konasana. Any forward momentum with the spine has to be complemented by the upward lift of the chest. So try to lift your chest up to the ceiling even as you bend forward over your leg. Smooth, steady inhales and exhales, really looking to lengthen and deep in your breath. And then coming back to center. You can walk your hands down the center between both legs. Now, really, the hip mobility will determine how far forward you can walk your hands without losing alignment and support in the spine. 
So if you start to notice that the spine is curling or the low back is rounding to the wall behind you, really try to restore that upward lift sensation. Roll of the shoulders back. Now as you bend forward, it has to come from the intelligence of the hips. So you lift the knees off the floor and press the heels down. You will feel maybe the inner thighs start to stretch. Sometimes the inner knee starts to feel a stretch. Gently lengthening your inhale and exhale. And then you'll come back up to sit. Now, if the legs feel tired, you can always take a break in Baddha Konasana. So that's bringing the feet together with the knees wide. There's a couple of ways to come into this that I want to just briefly talk about. You can hook underneath the knee near the thigh and just swing the foot in if the knee is comfortable. And you're really kind of creating space in that knee joint when you use your hands. However, if the knees generally feel tension or discomfort or like there's some compression in that joint, you're actually going to lift the knee up towards the ceiling, start to walk that heel in, and try to use your hands so that the ligaments and tendons in the back of the knee are really soft as you do this. And then once the knee is up, heel is in, then you can take the knee out to the side. And instead of twisting in that knee joint, now you have to twist in the hip to take that knee out. So sometimes the knee is a little bit more mobile than the hip joint, and that's where you're going to feel tension in the knee. So that's just a little side note for health as we come into Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. So you hold on to the ankles. You can actually pull on the ankles and roll the shoulders back. Do a couple shoulder rolls here and just notice what's going on in the shoulders. If there's tension or stiffness, then roll the shoulders back, roll the shoulders forward. And then ultimately we want the shoulders to be lifting back and down the spine. And while we're here, we'll do a couple of neck rolls. So you can take your chin down towards the chest and we're just doing this 180 degrees in front of us. So you can take your ear, left ear, over the left shoulder now. The gaze goes forward. And then as you bring your head forward, chin to the chest, you'll notice the gaze goes down. Right ear over the right shoulder. Again, gaze comes forward. Neck rolls here. We're really just staying in front of the body. We're not taking the neck back, but stretching the sides of the neck. Even feel the tops of your shoulders stretch as you do this. So while you do it, notice if the shoulders again are draping forward with that, or if you can keep the shoulders rolling back the entire time. So it's really just the neck, just the head that's moving here. You can even hold on one side, take a few breaths. Notice if one side is more stiff than the other. For me, the right side of my neck is, tends to be a little bit more stiff. I definitely feel that today. And then before lifting the head, bring your chin down to the chest so that you're just lifting it straight up. Okay, we're going to move back into Upavista Konasana. So extended angle pose. You can lift your knees up, spread the legs wide. Now we're going to move into Parivrita Upavista Konasana. So we're just going to lean over on that left thigh. This is where it's pretty important to make sure that the, there's some resistance with the knee lifting off the floor. Now if this is muscularly difficult to do, that knee joint just wants to drop and you feel that it gets really tired and it's difficult to maintain, <coughs> you can go ahead and add some support underneath that knee. So you would roll a blanket, <coughs> even a small towel, and you could place it underneath that knee joint to provide some resistance for you. But especially as we lean over to the side now, I am putting more weight on that leg, so I want to make sure I'm not overextending that knee joint. So as we lean over to the left, I have my forearm on the thigh, and we're going to reach the right arm up and overhead. As you press the opposite thigh, that right thigh down, lift the right arm up nice and tall. And remember, we're still trying to create this upward lifting sensation in the spine. So even if you can really move far over today, just for this one single time, just focus on lifting up and getting some upward length. And then we're going to move over to the other side. So taking the right arm, right forearm to the right thigh, reaching the left arm up and overhead. Taking a deep inhalation, deep exhalation. 
Try to keep more weight in the heels and the hips as the knees lift slightly. And then we'll do each side one more time. This time for a progression, you can even start to take the forearm to the floor. In the final pose, you're grabbing onto the foot, looking up towards the ceiling and reaching that right arm up and overhead to grasp onto the foot as well. You can use a strap for this, or you can just have that forearm planted on the floor, reaching the arm up and overhead. So we're keeping the same form and maybe not grasping the foot today. And as you take a few breaths, press the heels down, lift the chest up, and try and turn your rib cage up towards the ceiling. Paribhrita Upavista Konasana. And then to come up, you're going to swing the arms, giving you a nice upward lift. And we're going to do the other side. So you're welcome to stay with the forearm at the thigh, or maybe you're moving that, that forearm down to the floor. Maybe you're even grabbing onto that foot, leaning back. You should feel more weight on your right hip, returning the rib cage up towards the ceiling and reach the left arm up and overhead. Maybe uh -huh. grab the foot, maybe not. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, keep the pressure on the heels. And let the face be soft. And then coming back up. Each side just one more time. Parivrita Upavista Konasana. Leaning over the left leg, turning the rib cage towards the ceiling as you lift the right arm up and overhead. And then lifting yourself back up. Last side, last time, leaning over the right leg, turning the rib cage up as you hold on or reach the left arm up and overhead. And then back to center, sitting up nice and tall. You can bring the legs back into Upavista Konasana, or uh, excuse me, Bada Konasana, bound angle pose. Sitting up nice and tall. Taking a few breaths. Now we're going to start moving to laying down on the floor. A lot of poses where you're reclined and laying down on the floor start with supta, which is always just very nice. Whenever I hear the word supta, I get quite excited in class. But for these next series of poses, you're going to need a strap and a folded or rolled blanket. If you have a bolster at home, you're welcome to use that as well. I'll explain what we're gonna do, I'll demonstrate it, and you're welcome to practice along, but then I'm gonna have the space after I demonstrate it for us to all do it together. It is gonna be a sequence and a series of poses, and we're gonna be laying down. So it'll be a little bit difficult to like lift your head up and look at your screen and stuff like that. So I want you to kind of see where we're headed before we really dive into it. So I've unfolded, a blanket, we call it a shelf fold. It's kind of like when you fold a towel and put it on the shelf. I've unfolded it once and it comes out to this longer, wider blanket. From there, I'm gonna roll the long edge. So you can do this with a towel, maybe a couple of towels, but we really just want some rounded support. It doesn't have to be very thick. We're gonna do a little back bend over this. If you've done this before, maybe you'll use some thicker support. If your neck tends to bother you, grab an extra towel or blanket. We're going to place the head on the towel or blanket, and this roll is going to go across the upper back. You're also going to want to have your strap nearby for what we're doing afterwards. So this is kind of the general setup we're going to start with. Like I said, I'm going to demonstrate this because we're going to go through three poses together, and then you're welcome to join along with me. So I'm going to start laying back. On this rolled blanket, I have my feet flat on the floor, knees bent. I'm coming to elbows. And as I spread my elbows off to the side, I really want this rolled blanket to tuck right underneath my armpit. So if you were to wear one of those heart rate monitors, monitor bands across your chest, they often tuck up quite close to the armpit. And that's what we want to think about this being in relationship to our back. Then I can bring my head to the blanket stack. You can have your hands just reaching out along the sides or in what we call this bull post style form. And then we'll straighten the legs. So we'll be here for a couple of breaths. Now I'm just gonna move through this so you can see the demonstration and we'll spend some more time when we go to practice together. From here, I'm gonna roll over to my side. 
I'm going to remove my blankets and have my strap nearby. Then I'm going to lay back down. We're going to move into a pose called blissful child pose. So I'm going to bring my knees towards my chest, hold on to my feet, and I really want my heels to be over my knees. So not over the hips, that would be this pose, but instead bringing the heels directly over the knees. Now, if this is difficult for you to hold on to the feet, this is where a strap is going to be beneficial. You can either hold on to the strap like this. Mine's tied together right now, so you could even hold on to the tail ends in your hands and have the feet quite wide if the knees or the hips are uncomfortable. Ananda Balasana, blissful child pose. From there, we're going to move into Supta Padangustasana. So I have my legs flat on the floor, feet straight. I'm going to bend one knee towards my chest, lift that leg up. This is Supta Padangustasana one, and then we'll take the leg off to the side. Now you can see that I have the wall there for support, which is very helpful. Number one, if you're pregnant or you're menstruating, or if you're just feeling very fatigued today, it's nice to have that wall support there for you or you don't have to have it. And when we go to practice Supta Padangustasana, just make sure that the space around you is clear and we'll take the leg off to the side for Supta Padangustasana too. From there, we're gonna turn it over into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. I'm gonna tuck my shirt in, hands forward, uh, knees back from the hips, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So now you know kind of where we're headed. I'm gonna give you instruction and cues, but I hope that having that in your mind will at least give you a little direction if you get lost or are not sure where we're at with everything. All right, so let's go ahead and do this together now. So we're gonna start with that back bend, supported back bend on the rolled uh, towel or rolled blanket. Starting with the feet flat on the floor, knees bent towards the ceiling and bring your elbows towards your rolled blanket or towel. And as you spread the elbows away, feel that that rolled blanket hits you right across the back of your shoulders. And it should feel like it's under your armpit. That it really starts to support the back of the armpit and the base of the armpit. As you take a few breaths here, let go of any tension in the neck or the base. If there's still some tension in the back of the neck, you can even roll the edge of your blanket that you're using as a pillow and give a little bit more support to that neck area. And we've started with the knees bent and feet flat on the floor for a reason. You take a nice deep exhale, try to soften any gripping in the abdomen or the belly. As you breathe, you should almost feel like the belly button is falling and moving towards the spine, towards the floor. As you press your feet down into the floor, during your exhale, see if you can almost create a tucking sensation with the tailbone moving towards your heels. So as you tuck your tailbone towards your heels, there's a little bit more length in the low spine to get it gets integrated, but we're also creating that hollowing sensation in the abdomen as well. Now try to maintain that as you straighten the legs one at a time. We still want the belly button to be moving towards the spine. We still want that slight tuck of your tailbone towards the heels. And as you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, Observe how the lungs expand, how the lower area of the rib cage expands with your breath. There is some slight activity in the legs and in the abdomen. Still the feet are flexed slightly just as if you were standing on them. The heels press down into the floor. And we still have that tucking characteristic of the tailbone as the abdomen and the belly button draws towards the spine. So even though the lower body is active here, see if you can release any tension and gripping in the upper body. And this can become 
a skill that we learn to evolve with yoga is that we have certain muscle groups that are active while other muscle groups start to relax, start to lengthen. That's really what we want to experience here. Is it from the bottom of the rib cage up? It becomes quite soft, quite relaxed, a little bit more effortless. But from the bottom of the ribs down to the feet does maintain a little bit of a frame, a slight bit of effort. Every inhale and exhale, observe the depth, observe the expansion of your breath in your lungs, in your rib cage. Try to let go of any gripping in your face, in the eyes, or the jaw. Now, if your low back feels comfortable doing so, you can just go ahead and let go of the effort in the legs. Allow the feet to splay. Allow the entire body to feel supported as it weighs heavy on the floor and the props. As we practice these more restorative postures, it's meant to create not only some release and length in the body, but we also have to start to cool the nervous system. We get confronted with facing the process of calming the mind. The mind is going to naturally wander. It's very natural for thoughts to come and go and for the mind to chase those thoughts outside of this present moment. But as you focus on your breath, really notice what's happening right here, right now. You start to observe the sensations in the body. What changes as you breathe? What shifts happen in the body as you inhale and exhale? Even if the mind starts to follow thoughts, you can gently bring your focus back to your body, back to your breath. Just observe and notice when that happens. During these last few breaths, let go of everything, everywhere. And then we'll start to move into the next pose. Slowly bend your knees, roll to your side. You can press yourself up enough to move the blankets out from underneath you and grab a strap. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the direction of myself because I'm gonna practice Supta Padangustasana with the wall. But before that, we're gonna move into Ananda Balasana. So knees wide, grab onto your feet. And if you can't, you'll grab a strap. And then as you pull on your outer foot bone, notice that the arms are along the inner knee, the inner thighs. You're then going to pull your knee or your heels over your knee. Not a lot of blissful child pose. As you take a few breaths here, go ahead. Okay. 
as you take a few breaths, you'll start to notice that we're not necessarily rounding the spine or the back, but really looking for depth in the hips and in the heels. Or in the hips and the thighs. I was distracted as I was muting some people. And if you feel comfortable doing so, you can even stretch the legs straight, kind of like Upa Vista Konasana, which we practiced earlier, wide angle pose. And then bending the knees, heels over the knees, Ananda Balasana, blissful child pose. Taking a few deep breaths here, lifting the side waist away from the pelvis. So you start to feel that that space between the armpit and the hips is what lengthens and get, gets long. And then straighten the legs off to the side. That wide angle pose, now laying on our backs, Upavista Konasana. And then bending the knees, heels over the knees. You can release the hands, bring the feet to the floor, grab your strap. And you'll lay down flat on the floor with the legs straight, heels pressing down. Supta Padangustasana one and two. So we'll go ahead and start by bringing our right leg in looping the strap around the heel. So now I have one heel is on the floor, my left heel. The right heel is lifting up towards the ceiling and right over my hip. I'm using a strap to connect my right arm to my right foot. I'm just taking a few breaths here. Now with both of the legs nice and stick straight, try to press that right thigh away from your chest and notice the length along the right side of the body. How is that space between the right hip and the right armpit? Then notice what's happening to the shoulders. Imagine as if you can mimic and integrate the sensations that you felt with that rolled blanket, rolled towel underneath your upper back. Supta Padangustasana one. And then you'll take your right leg off to the side but focus on pinning your left thigh down. So that straight leg that's on the floor is what actually has to maintain contact. Even though the right leg is moving off to the side, I want you to keep the left side of your body flat on the floor. And so be honest with yourself. If that left side of the body lifted off the floor, you'll lift your right leg back up, pin it back down, and only take the right leg off to the side as long as you can keep that left hip touching the floor, left thigh touching the floor. Supta Parengustasana two. And then coming back to center. I'll do one more time on this same side. So still the left leg is on the floor, right leg moves off to the side. But this time as you inhale and exhale, think about lifting the chest up, drawing your abdomen from right to left. So as you draw the belly in from right to left, now you're creating some resistance that complements and supports your body as you take the right leg off to the side. Now it's not about getting your right foot to the floor. Today I want you to have the right foot lifted off the floor and instead try to focus on that left side of the body touching the floor. And then coming back to center, you can unstrap the foot, bring the legs back straight. Supta Tadasana is this pose. Feet together, legs flat on the floor. Then you'll bend your left knee in towards your chest. Loop the strap around your heel. And left hand comes and holds onto the strap. And take your right arm off to the side. That right arm touching the floor can be a gentle reminder to spread from the center of the chest across the collarbones, out to the shoulders. So that the chest becomes quite wide. 
Now that we have the left leg lifted, left arm lifted, notice what's happening to the space on the left side of your body. Observe that space between the left hip and the left armpit. And as you press the left thigh away from you, really presses towards your right heel and lift the chest up. With both of the legs nice and stick straight, we'll take your left leg off to the side. Now, similar form goes for this side as it did the other. Even though the left leg is moving off to the side, we want the right side of the body to be firm, to be grounded on the floor. To gently lengthen your inhale and exhale. Press into the heels, making the legs stick straight. Lift the chest up and roll the shoulders back. Imagine as if you had that rolled blanket underneath your shoulder blades on the back of your body. And then you'll bring that leg back to center. But we're gonna do this one more time. Both legs stick straight, keeping the right side of your body pinned to the floor. Right hip pins to the floor as you take your left leg off to the side. So even though it's that left leg moving, it's the right side of the body that has to stay firm and stay planted. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, start to draw your abdomen from left to right. You can draw the abdomen from left to right and plant the right side of the body down more firmly. What would that feel like? And then bringing that leg back to center. I can unstrap the foot and return to Supta Tadasana, reclined mountain pose. And we'll come up to Adho Mukha Svanasana. So you'll bend your knees, roll to your side, and we'll come to downward facing dog. So wrists are slightly forward from the shoulders, knees are slightly back from the hips. You can point your index finger forward as you spread the fingers wide. Curl the toes under and lift the hips up. Now, if this is uncomfortable for you or difficult for you, you can always use the wall for your hands or a chair instead of the floor. And it'll start to bring a little bit more weight to the feet. But if you're here in the more traditional pose with me, go ahead and bend your knees towards your chest. And as you press the hands down, lift the hips up and back towards the wall behind you so that the side waists get nice and long. You'll even feel the sides of the armpits start to spread, start to lengthen here. And then try to keep that lift of your hips as you straighten the legs. It's okay if the heels are lifted off the floor. Try to keep the, the he hips lifting up nice and high. Then you can start to take the heels down to the floor, but notice if that lift in the hips is lost. What does it take to keep that sensation, to keep that length and that lift of the tailbone moving up towards the ceiling as the calves iron down to the heels, heels come to the floor. And during these last few breaths, try to reach your head towards the floor. And coming down to rest, take your knees wide, toes together, Adho Mukha Virasana. We're gonna come up to our hands and knees and practice what some call a cat-cow position. So you'll have your knees a little bit more underneath the hips, wrists underneath the shoulders. And just for a moment here, I wanna do some shoulder rolls and then we'll move into this cat-cow posture. And so as you do some shoulder rolls, try to roll the shoulders down to the floor. Notice how the upper back lifts to the ceiling. Roll the shoulders up towards the ears and roll the shoulders to the back of the body, kind of like they're trying to lift up to the ceiling. And then shoulders pull towards the hips. So we're emphasizing these directions as we create these shoulder rolls, becoming a little bit more aware, a little bit more intentional with, the, with where the shoulders are in space. 
And then we're gonna do this cat-cow position. And so here, as you exhale, this is the cat lifting the back towards the ceiling. Notice how the head drapes, head falls to the floor, tailbone tucks down to the floor, but the whole mid back and upper back is actually rounding and lifting up to the ceiling. And then moving into a cow position, the hips lift up, shoulders roll back, and head starts to look forward. And so you can do this with your breath. As you exhale, tuck the tailbone down, head falls to the floor, upper back lifts. Inhaling, coming into that cow position, hips lift up, shoulders roll back, gaze forward. And do this a few times at your own accord. Exhaling and inhaling. Focus on the movement of the spine. Notice how there's some complementary actions in the hips and in the shoulders as you do this. As you come to a more neutral tabletop position, Take a moment to turn your inner arms forward, outer arms back. So if you were to turn your upper arms in the socket, what you're gonna notice is that the pit of your elbow and the point of your elbow start to change directions. So just observe as you turn your inner arm forward and the outer arm back and go back and forth with rolling your upper arms in the sockets, notice what's happening to your elbows. And then, as you finally end, inner arm forward, outer arm back, notice how the pit of your elbow is facing forward. It's pointing towards the hands. So if you were to bend the elbows, the elbows bend towards the legs. Now we want to keep that. As you turn your inner arms forward, outer arms back, prepare to go back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So wrists slightly forward from the shoulders, knees slightly back from the hips. Curl the toes under, lift the hips up. Inner arms forward, outer arms down to the floor. As you take a nice deep inhale and exhale, lift the hips up and reach the head to the floor. You keep the inner arms turning towards the ceiling, outer arms turning towards the floor. Notice where the shoulders are in space. Can you bring them to the back of your body and create space between the ears and the shoulders? And then come down to rest. Knees wide, toes together, sitting back on the heels. You can have some blankets or towels underneath your hips if the hips don't touch the heels. You can let the head rest, hands rest, or you can even rest your head on your arms. And then we're going to come into Prasarada Padottanasana. So you'll take the legs wide. Heels come in line with the back edge of the mat. You can have a chair, a wall, or even some blocks underneath the hands here in this position. But we are keeping the head low this whole time. You start lifting the head up, up and down, it starts to bring more activity into the mind. But really, as we're doing any standing postures today, it's really been just two of them, Adho Mukha Svanasana and now Prasarada Padottanasana. We're really looking to have the head in line with the heart, or maybe even below the heart. So I have some support underneath my hands. My feet are wide. Heels are under the hips, wrists are under the shoulders. I'm taking a few breaths here. I am lengthening my spine, so my head is in line with my spine as opposed to lifting up or dropping down. It's in a more neutral position here. Now there's some aspects to the form. As you press your outer heel down, pinky toe down into the floor, try and slide the feet together, almost as if you can pinch the thighs towards each other. Let go of any gripping or tension in the face or the eyes. And we want the back to be in a concave back position, meaning that the back is somewhat flat, almost as if the chest and the lower ribs are moving towards the floor while the shoulders are lifting up towards the ceiling. 
So I'll say that again. It's almost like the lower ribs, they move to the floor, but your shoulders are rolling back and lifting up to the ceiling. Now you can start to lower the support that's under your hands down to the floor, but ultimately notice and pay attention as to whether or not you have that concave back posture. You want to maintain it. So some might need more than just blocks, maybe even a chair, maybe even a ledge or the wall. And if you feel comfortable holding that concave back position, you can bring your hands to the floor, Prasarada Padottanasana. Now, no matter what support you're using under your hands, you'll bring your hands in line with the ankles and bring that support with you and then let the head hang. Now, if you're using a chair or the wall, it'll be a little bit different. You can even hold on to the legs and let the head hang. Or you can have your hands on that support and let the head hang. But the intention here is to have the head below the heart. Letting any tension in the sides of the neck or the face to soften. And as you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, feel how the rib cage gets long. And it also starts to open and expand. With the sides of the rib cage start to spread. With the air, the prana, as you breathe, creates space in those areas. Then you'll walk the hands forward, heel toes, step the feet together into Uttanasana, intense stretch pose. You can have the feet hip width apart. So hands are still on the support, still back to that concave back position. And then you can bend the knees and grab some additional props now. We're going to practice Setu Bandha Sarvangasana to form a bridge pose. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, number one, less props is with the block. You just have the block underneath the hips. Number two option is a little bit more supportive, meaning that you're going to have the whole back of the body, the back of the rib cage, the back of the hips are supported while the shoulders are resting on the floor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the more supported version um, because that's what people can start to get into. So I do have a bolster. You can even use a blanket or a towel, unfold it once from that shelf fold, and then you have this nice long blanket which is gonna go along the spine. You're most likely going to need two of these so that the hips are also supported with this. Ideally, we would use two bolsters, yoga bolsters, that are the same height. But if you don't have those, that's where the, the blankets are going to be nice. So I'll demonstrate with the blankets. And then I'll demonstrate with the block. If you already are familiar with this and know which support is best for you, you can go ahead and get in at any time. So I have blankets underneath me, I'm sitting on them, then I'm going to lay back, and at first my head comes to the floor and my shoulders are on the blanket stack, but I want to scoop myself off so that the tops of my shoulders are touching the floor. And as I come to this position, I am trying to roll the shoulders back, I'm curling my shoulders to the floor here, so it's just the tops of my shoulders that are on the floor, I have a blanket underneath my spine, supporting that back of the rib cage where we had the rolled blanket earlier when we did the back bend, and then straightening the legs. 
Now, if you're menstruating or pregnant, it's gonna be more beneficial to just take the legs wide. Some of you might even find that that's just a little bit more comfortable to do. So this is where we're gonna be is Setubanda Sarvangasana. This is the more restorative posture. So you're welcome to get into that. I'm gonna demonstrate the version with the block. So I have my block within an arm's reach, starting with my feet on the floor, knees to the ceiling, laying down flat on the floor. I'm gonna tuck my shoulders underneath me, turning the inner arms up, outer arms down, opening the front of the armpit. I'm using the mat to pin my shoulders under my body. I'm gonna bring my heels in and lift the hips up. Now, as soon as my hips are lifted, there's still some space for me to tuck the shoulders underneath me. I'm gonna grab my block. You can place it on the low setting, medium setting, or the high setting, but place it right under the tailbone. Trying to keep that lift of the chest. It'll be under the tailbone and then we straighten the legs. Setubanda Sarvagasana. Now this is just with the block. A little bit less props, but not as supportive. I still have to keep a certain form in my body. So even though I don't have the props to support me, I have to support myself muscularly. So you can decide which posture is best for you today. But overall, you want to be in a pose that you can really let go of the face and focus on the breath. The characteristics of each version has the tops of the shoulders on the floor. There is this back bend in the upper body. As you straighten the legs, we almost have, we seek to have this tucking of the tailbone sensation. And that's what becomes a resistance in the pose. It's how do we maintain this tucking of the tailbone and this back bend position and this rolling of the shoulders back. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, soften the face and the eyes. Let go of any tension in the jaw or in the throat. Just be with your body and be with your breath. Notice when the mind starts to wander, gently bring it back to focusing on your body. If you have the block underneath you and you went with that version, go ahead and bring the feet in, lift the hips up, and rest with the spine on the floor. And if you're in the support with the blankets, you can stay there for a few more moments. For those with the block, go ahead and lay down in Shavasana, corpse pose for a few breaths. Even grab a blanket to place underneath your head if you'd like. And just be here for a few more breath cycles. As you gently lengthen your inhale and exhale, acknowledge the support underneath you. And start to let go. Letting go into the props, into the floor. Feeling your weight rest on that support. As you inhale, fill the lungs completely. 
Notice how the air generally moves to the front of the lungs. Let's see if you can breathe into the back of the lungs. What would it feel like to breathe into the sides of the lungs? Maybe even the sides of the rib cage. As you exhale, exhale completely and fully. Notice how there's a slight space and pause at the end of your exhale. Allow that space to linger slightly. As you allow that space at the end of your exhale to linger, let go of everything everywhere. And now slowly place your hands on your abdomen. Take a moment to appreciate your body for all that it's done and all that it will do. Appreciate your mind for taking the time to harmonize with your body today. Move slowly as you come up. Start by bending the knees. Take your right arm up and overhead. As you roll to your right side, you can rest your head on your upper arm for a few breaths. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and push yourself up to a comfortable seated posture. appreciate you all for taking the time to practice yoga today. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.